Thanks to your guys' support on this channel, I was invited to get an early hands-on experience with Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance. In this video, I'll be telling you what this game is with some new information thanks to the devs. I'll be showing you many of the in-game features with accompanying gameplay, and of course giving you guys my initial impressions with a final conclusion at the end. For more RPG, MMO, and Dark Alliance content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Links to my Twitter and my Discord server will be below. Let's get right into it. Dark Alliance will be coming out on June 22nd for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. It will cost $39.99, and there will be no microtransactions, believe it or not. This game is one to four players. You can play offline by yourself, use the in-game matchmaking with quick play, or play with friends. Couch Co-op will also be coming to the game with the release of its first DLC in the summer. Dark Alliance is a dungeon brawler or looter slasher, whatever the hell you want to call it, where you'll fight through various stages, collect and upgrade loot, and then move on to higher difficulties. There will be 21 unique levels and 6 challenge ratings which are similar to world tiers that you may see in other games like Outriders. In this game, you'll be playing as the Companions of the Hall, which is a band of adventurers that I personally hold very dearly to my heart, as I've read more books on them than you can count on five hands. Kevin, the lead game designer who played alongside us, revealed to us that the game's first DLC will be coming out this summer, and it will be completely free. This DLC will contain a new quest, which will be three acts, which equates to three new levels. This DLC should also bring with it, like I mentioned before, for couch co-op, but only for the PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. PS4 and Xbox One should also be getting couch co-op, but not until later in the year. The second DLC will be coming out in the fall and will also be completely free. No microtransactions and free DLCs? What the... The, is this 2021? What the hell's going on? This DLC will contain a hardcore mode, which is an extra level of difficulty for players who have already gotten to the end game. And it will also have three new acts like the first DLC. And the last planned DLC will be coming out later in the year and is called Echoes of the Blood War. Those of you who follow my channel closely will have heard of this blood war before, a never-ending battle between demons and devils. Echoes of the Blood War will cost $19.99, and is supposedly a really big chunk of content containing new missions, monsters, and maybe most importantly a new playable character, which is said to be more of a magic caster type. I know many of you guys will be happy to hear that because none of the current playable characters fall into this playstyle or class, whatever you want to call it. If you have any theories as to who this caster may be, definitely let us know below in the comments. So in my experience with Dark Alliance, I played almost two full missions, and I was also able to run around the base camp messing around with things and seeing what this game offers. The first thing I want to mention is that if you're expecting a Dark Alliance 3, you're going to be let down. This game really is nothing like the originals, and this is coming from someone who's a huge fan of Dark Alliance 1 and 2. Once I was able to get the thought and kind of hope of a Dark Alliance 3 completely out of my head, which in fairness, this game is not called Dark Alliance 3, I was able to come in with more of an open mind and just treat this as a totally different game. My gameplay session started off in the player's base camp, which is located on a mountain in Icewind Dale called Kelvin's Cairn. This base camp is where you'll prepare yourself before each journey, or each mission, with the various stations that you can go to. There's the world map, where you'll choose your act and difficulty. The loot chest, where all of the loot you earned will be kept awaiting for your arrival. The trophy station, where you'll see a trophy for every boss that you have defeated, and anyone that comes into your game will be able to see these trophies as well. The deep gnome merchant, where you can sell your gear, apply skins to your gear, upgrade your gear by converting crystals, and upgrade your usables, which are essentially your potions. This is a progression type economy, and I want to point out that this upgrade system really is the perfect layout to do microtransactions. So really big shout out to Toot Games or Wizards of the Coast or whatever, both of them for not actually going that route. I would have already been trashing the hell out of this game if, if I knew they didn't stick true to my baby Dark Alliance games and then also threw microtransactions in there. Whew! They would have regretted inviting me to play the damn game. That's all I'm saying. 
but they didn't. So shout out to both of them. I love you both. Please invite me to future events. The player's base camp was actually nice and I didn't expect the visuals to be as good as they were. Spawning in on the famed mountain with the companions of the hall and everything looking actually pretty good was kind of a bit of a relief. These characters in the world in general do mean a lot to me and I've read a million books on them and I was really worried that this game wouldn't bring them justice or bring them the justice that they deserve. But we started off on the right foot. I was pleasant surprised. I immediately noticed that the game did feel pretty smooth and the characters were responsive even with the game being streamed to me or to my desktop for me to play. When your party is ready to embark on a mission, the party leader will select the details at the world map and then everyone will group up at that blue teleportation circle and be teleported to the entrance to that specific dungeon. In each dungeon, there will of course be various enemies, some larger than others, and an end boss. There will be traps to navigate, secret hidden puzzles that you can solve to earn extra feat points, and lore objects for players who want to learn more about the ongoing story, which is of course D&D lore and this game is based on the book The Crystal Shard in the Legend of Drist book series. The first mission we did was purposefully on a really, really easy difficulty so that the devs could talk to us and we could try out things. And our second mission was on a bit harder of a difficulty, but still nothing that really presented a challenge or felt anything like Dark Souls or anything like that. Considering that there are six challenge ratings though, and that a hardcore mode is coming out at a later date, I'm assuming that the game can prove to be quite challenging. This is important for myself because I do prefer challenging games but I can't really comment on this aspect at the moment without more experience. Like I said before, you'll be playing as one of the four companions of the Hall. If you play as Drist, you'll be a dual-wielding drow ranger rogue who has very high mobility, specializes in critical hits, and will also get bonuses from attacking enemies from behind. Drist is a high DPS character. Wolfgar is the human barbarian wielding a huge warhammer and he can dish out massive damage but he's also very good at opening up opponents and making them vulnerable to follow up attacks. This can work great against enemies with shields as Drist won't be able to get through their shields as easily as Wolfgar. Cadibri, which is who I spent most of my gameplay playing as, is a ranged specialist wielding a magical bow. She can dish out good range damage, but also has really good support and utility abilities, such as her AoE heal and her revives. And last but not least is Bruinor Battlehammer, wielding a shield and an axe. And Bruinor, as most of you guys can guess, is the tank of the party. He has a lot of defense and health and resistances, and he has abilities to manage aggro, such as with his taunt ability. Each character definitely feels and looks different from each other, which might offer some replayability and variation in your playthroughs. Each hero will have a light attack, which does less damage but doesn't consume much stamina. They all have a heavy attack, which will of course be a bit slower, deal more damage than the light attack, but also take up more stamina. Cadibri's heavy attack is actually one of her bow shots. These attacks can be chained and combined to create a wide variety of combos, and it was actually pretty fun messing around with this, and I think you'd be surprised at all of the combo possibilities. There is a block in this game which will block or mitigate some incoming damage. Using block will slow down your movement speed, and when you block an attack it will drain some of your stamina. If you want to get fancy, you can Dark Souls your block by doing a parry. If you can time an incoming attack correctly with a block, you'll perform a parry which will disrupt the enemy's attack and allow you to follow up with a counter attack. Successful parries will also help restore some of your stamina. So seeing a parry mechanic was a really good thing in my eyes because it strays a little bit away from the mindless hack and slash and brings in some more timing, so this was a nice addition to the basic combat that they have in the game. Each hero will also have an evade, which is basically your dodge. Press it once and you'll do a quick step. Twice and your character will perform an evasive maneuver. And if you're playing as Drist, you can do it three times for an even cooler, quicker dodge. 
but we're not done yet with character abilities. Each hero will also have a set of moves that they can do by pressing certain button combinations or moving in certain directions and pressing a specific button. And like the combos before, there's actually quite a lot of these moves. It was impressive to see, but unfortunately I didn't realize we could even do these moves until after we were done with the missions. So I checked out many of them on Cadibri, Brunor, and Drist at the player's base camp of course, and they all did certainly feel unique from each other. Each hero will have an ultimate ability that builds up. Brunor's ultimate is an area shield that mitigates damage. Wolfgar goes into a rage mode. Cadibri has arcane arrows, which rapidly fires a bunch of magical arrows. And Drist gets to call in Guenevar, a magical panther from the astral plane. Each hero will also equip two of four special abilities each mission. For Cadibri, I swapped in and out her AoE heal, ensnaring strike, resurrection ability, and her heart seek Valley AoE ability. I believe these special abilities do charge back up with the more kills that you get. When you level up, you'll be putting points into your ability scores, which are the classic D&D abilities. If you're wondering what abilities like Charisma or Intelligence might do in a game like this, well, Charisma increases the rate of your character's ultimate charge and its radius, among other things, and Intelligence reduces cooldown timers and stuff like that. You'll also periodically gain feat points to buy feats, which are mostly passive bonuses to your character, such as physical damage bonuses, higher max HP, critical damage increase, and so on. Being a looter game, I wish I could comment more on the actual loot, but since we only finished one mission, I didn't really get much. I'll certainly be dropping videos on all of this stuff when the game actually releases. Just remember that you'll also be upgrading your loot at the Deep No Merchant and messing with your skins and stuff of that nature. So now that you guys have seen the foundation of what this game is, here's my initial impressions final thoughts. And this is actually kind of hard to do because my initial impressions videos usually take place after 10 to 20 hours of gameplay, and this is really only like 30 minutes of actual dungeon gameplay. The highlight of the game to me was the heroes and the wide variety of abilities and combos that they have. I thought it was really well done. The combat itself was decent and it was pretty fun, not the best in the world but certainly not the worst. And then some other things in the game seemed a bit on the cheaper side like some of the visual effects, some of the areas on the map that we played, or even just the looting screen in general. The key thing here is that it's a $40 game and not a $60 or $70 game like the extremely overpriced Godfall was. For a $40 game with no microtransactions with two of the three DLCs being free, I feel more comfortable saying that those of you who enjoy these looter hack and slash multiplayer type games will likely get enjoyment out of Dark Alliance. And when Couch Co-op comes to the game in the summer, those of you that can participate in that I think could potentially have a lot of fun. Players who need deep, complex, RPG mature experiences, is this game going to be for you? No, of course not, but if you want to just jump in and slay some monsters with friends and laugh about it, I think it will actually do the job. It's important to note that this game definitely doesn't seem to be aimed specifically at D&D players, or even necessarily aimed at fans of the Legend of Drist books, but more so at a casual audience. I know this will omit many of you guys on my channel, so I do want to make that clear. The top questions that I'm left with are how big will all the levels actually be and how varied will they be from each other? And also, will the game actually provide a good challenge on the higher tier difficulties? These are two important questions that I'll have to answer in future videos and the answers to them will likely determine what type of longevity I personally can actually get out of this game. Now personally I'm not a huge casual hack and slash player, which is why I'm hoping that the game does provide a good challenge, but even as someone who doesn't necessarily love this genre, I don't hate it, I just don't love it as much as I do like CRPGs or Dark Souls and stuff like that. I can see this game appealing to uh, a specific type of player, and like I said, it's not for people that want the complex D&D experience or even a D&D light experience, it's not for those types of players, it's going to be for the casual casual hack and slash player that wants to just have some fun with friends, or maybe even for those of you guys that just want to switch it up a little bit, play as the companions of the hall, beat the game, and then get back to whatever more serious RPG that you're playing. 
If you guys are interested in watching a longer gameplay focused video, make sure to check my channel as I released another video today. And in that video, it's just kind of me playing the game and talking with the lead game designer, Kevin, and he offers a lot of good insight into the game. Thank you guys so much. For those of you that watch this video, much more Dark Alliance to come in the future. I also do stream on this channel, not on Twitch, and my schedule is posted on the About section. Really appreciate your guys' support, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to get some early hands-on experience with games like Dark Alliance, which do fit into my channel. See ya.